Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Scab of Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors. Scab has a knife review channel on YouTube that has taken off in the past year, and it's been thrilling to see because he likes the large, combative, and beastly fixed blade knives not featured on many of the channels I follow. He takes them out back, he puts them through hard use, and it's like you're just hanging out with him, thrashing on and with knives. Plus, he's a Cold Steel and Emerson fanboy like me, so I find him relatable. Uh, in his case, I came for the big knives, but stayed for the big character, wielding them. Scab's heartfelt love of the knives in most all forms comes through and is totally relatable, as I mentioned. So we're going to meet him. We're going to talk to him and uh, find out all about him, his channel, and his favorite knives. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and download the show to your favorite podcast app. Also, uh, if you want to help support the show, you can do so on Patreon. The quickest way to do that is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Scab, welcome to the Knife Chunky Podcast. How you doing, sir? Good, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. As I just mentioned up front, uh, I was really drawn. To, actually, it was, uh, it was uh, Shredder who recommended I check you out. And uh, he's like, you're going to love the knives he features. And uh, yeah, I did. Uh, but I also like what's behind the videos. And, you know, you definitely are are doing this not just for fun there's there's stuff behind it there's a real uh mission in your work and i uh, it resonates with me um so anyway uh, it's a it's a great pleasure to have you on the show um in light of what i was just saying every one of your videos kind of starts with a, a preamble and i want to ask you about that tell me about that well we started off and, and to be honest with you when i started the channel i wasn't really part of the knife community, meaning I, I didn't engage a lot. So when I started the channel, it wasn't long, Bob, that I was I was welcome in with open arms because that's what this community does. And man, as the, as the channel started to grow, I had seen a couple things. I'd seen the hashtag 22 a day. And man, it just, it hit me on a different level. I'm not a veteran. I, 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 want to make that clear, but my son served, my wife served, my grandfather served. So veterans causes are, are really on my heart. And, and the, the hashtag 22 a day, man, it just, it gut punched me. And I thought, you know what? We're growing as a channel and it's fun and we have a blast, you know, just like you do. But I, I in the back of my mind, I kept thinking we need to do more as we grow. And I want to be able to put rubber to the road. So that's why we open the way we do with, with we start with the hashtag 22 a day. And, and, and really, all it means is this. If you are a vet, you're welcome here. We don't do any anti-military. You'll never hear that. I really, I don't do politics, religion, or her. I just, I just don't. And I had a buddy of mine, Trey Edenfield, who's, who's law enforcement. I've, I've got cousins and all that who hit me up, he said, man, would you mind, and this was probably in 2020, right in there when they when law enforcement was just getting nailed. He said, would yeah. you say something for us? So we back the blue, so we say that, and I catch flack for that, and that's okay. And then uh, the addict, that's me. I've fought addiction for ever. So, you know, those three causes are big, and they're important to me. So I, I like having, I, I want people to know, you know, you're welcome here and it takes all kinds here and we don't discriminate. We don't segregate. Just come on in. 
and let's have a good time. That that's where that come from. It seems very. Uh, it it's sort of spelling out a lot of what you were talking about in terms of uh, the knife community as a as a group of enthusiasts um, who who have a love for this thing, you know, knives. Um, but there's there's I feel like it's different from other enthusiast communities and that it is so open and, um, you know, even knife makers themselves, you know, you could you can call most of them up if you can reach them uh, when they're not working and ask them how to do X, Y or Z. And they'll tell you. Yeah, that's that's I've gotten to where as we've grown, I, I've gotten more into it. I, I want to show you something real quick. We were talking before we started. And you love big knives, and that's mm. phenomenal. Speaking of knife makers, this is this is from Alpha Knife, and it's their buoy. And a guy, Jr., who is just a massive part of this channel, he keeps me in a lot of these knives. The guy's phenomenal. He's a vet. But Damon Lusky made this, and Damon, his background is in martial arts. He actually trains law enforcement. And you can tell that in his knives, but he's a very, very relatable guy. Um, it, you know, as we've grown and even before, a lot of the makers are, are willing to talk to you and help you. And, and a lot of the designers are, too. And that's why I love the community. I love the community because we're just an eclectic group. You mm -hmm. know, there's diff there's disagreements. You know what I know. But at the end of the day, when it's time to rally, everybody rallies. And, and that that's, you know, it's that bond and it doesn't matter, guy, girl, whatever. I that I love that. And that was new and that was fresh to me. Um, like I said, I wasn't part of the community. And when I come in, man, it was just like, ooh, welcome in. Everybody's welcome. And it's been great. Yeah. Always been into knives. Yes. Yes. Since I was I, I'm a southern boy. So you start carrying a pocket knife early. You start using one early. I've always just had, you know, some guys are into guns, some guys, and I, those are fine, but I love Blake and I love all Blake. Uh, oh, that is exactly how I am. Uh, my brother uh, is, you know, and I have a, a, a close friend who is also a gun uh, aficionado. And I'm like, I, I like them and I'm, you know, I've got mine, but I don't have this need to, to constantly acquire more of them. I love the engineering. They're beautiful and all of that but there is yeah i'm like you anything with a blade uh or a point um yes. just i've always gravitated toward them um also so you're you're a kid growing up in the south you're always carrying a pocket knife um how did this evolve into um a love of the big fixed blades i man it, and i've i've watched some of your stuff kind of in preparing and i love a lot of your knives and I'm a kid just at, at heart, just like you are. There's just something about, and to, here's here's how it really started. If you want to know the truth, here's how it started. When I started the channel, I had watched D-Bad, Donnie B all day, and I had watched Advanced Sniper, and I watched all these guys. And then I started watching other guys, and I watched like Big Red, and I watched all these, these folks, and I thought, I can do that. And I watched Donnie B all day. I'll never forget it with a 1917 cold steel, but and the excitement and the passion he had, and I thought I can do that. What I couldn't do was, was what I found out very quickly was the, the, the folders I've used one my whole life, but having the knife acumen, knowing the terms. And if you watch some of my first videos, I'm riding in a truck showing a knife, which isn't the safest. <laughs> but I found out real, real quick, Bob, that uh, I'm better off to pick up a knife, head out in the woods, let's cut some stuff up, and and learn as we go. So I, I shifted the, the the channel, and and basically what the channel is, you're going to see big knives, you're going to see some folders from Rosecraft. They've jumped in, they're sending some, which I'm greatly appreciative for them. But you're going to see a guy learning how to use a knife, as far as really building a skill set and so I, I found that when i do it that way it translates if that makes sense i can show one better than i can tell you about 
Yeah, it's kind of like you're going out back and learning about the knife and taking the camera with you. And actually, that's something um, I love. I love uh, all sorts of knife videos, just like I love all sorts of knives. I love the real close up ones. I, I do a couple of those. I do those um, where you show things really well lit, really up close. That's nice. But I I stalk channels where guys are out or or gals are out with thrashing on knives and because I've always been squeamish about them, you know, I, I spend money on a knife and I'm like, you know, but watching you watching uh, D bad, watching the shredder guys um, and, you know, going back to my old nut and fancy days, I'm like, yeah, I can baton, you know, if, if <laughs> so I've been, I've been starting to really work out some of my knives uh, that have been kind of sitting there not living their best life. That's I mean, that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's fun. And I, I was talking to uh, Grugs from Legion Tactical, and, and he started to get out now, and he set up kind of a studio. And, and Joe from Steel Forge and Fire, and I, I, I don't mean to shout people out as much, but that's, that's just part of what I do, mm -hmm. because all of you guys inspire me. All these channels inspire me. And, and one thing... And I wanted to talk to you some about this. One thing that I would like to do uh, with your help and with other people is kind of bridge that gap because there is a gap between tabletop guys and and demonstrate. And it shouldn't be. There's to me personally, there's value in every single knife review that's out there. That's legit. You know, you know full well what it takes to do this, to put yourself out there. You know, when you put in and, and, and I'll give you an, uh, an example, when when you're in the community, put out a video today and 99 percent of the comments, man, they're great scab, great job. And, that, and that's good. And I appreciate that. But I've learned with with doing some of these shorts, when you leave the knife community, the love's really not really not there, you know, and that's fine. But what I would like to do is 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 Brit just because it's a noticeable gap and it shouldn't be it's like two sides and i'm like there's value in everything you'd be amazed at the amount of channels that i watch i don't say a lot i don't comment a lot i always hit like I always make sure they get a view but to me we are one community and i you know there's a lot that i learned from watching you guys and and, and vice versa and it, I think it's a shame sometimes. And it's not really between, it's, I don't feel like it's between the reviewers because there's always that good rapport, you know. But but I, I, put, I put out a short not long ago and I started reading comments from other channel subscribers and I thought, wait a minute, there's a gap. And I want to make sure, one comment that I, and I, I just touch on it real quick, it didn't bother me at all, but it, it started me thinking because one guy was like, well, you know, not everybody works in an industrial environment and not everybody wants to abuse or not. And I thought, well, the industrial environment part, I understand. But I hope people don't think I'm abusing the knife. I, I try to do. I know there's a I know there's a fine line. And the other thing is this, Bob, it's everything I got. Everything I have is hard use. Even if I go with my um, drop one, even if I go with my Billy Wad demo, which oh, I I want that look. I want that so badly. <laughs> I adore Sorry. this knife, adore this knife, and but it it went right into a tire, and and here's why. And I think a lot of people don't realize like the DJ Horn sent me his. He said, I want you to do a hard use review. There's going to be certain folks watching. He said, I'm going to be mad at you if you don't go hard on it. He said, you know what? So I did. Billy Wah, you know about Billy Wah, right? No. You know who Billy Wah is. No. Billy Wah is the oldest CIA paramilitary man in United States history. They dropped Billy Wah in Afghanistan in 2001 at 71 years old. Yeah. That guy. Colonel Kurtz. So the Billy Wah demo is Robert Young Pelton, Bill Harsey, 
combo design Whoa. with Billy Wall's influence. They, 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 the story's incredible. And I actually talked to uh, Bill Harsey about it. When they decided to do a knife, he and Robert Young Pelton teamed up, which is was just an insane combo to begin with. Mr. Pelton met Billy Waugh at a Waffle House, I think, in Texas, and said, "Hey, I want you. We want you to design a knife if you were behind enemy lines." And this is what he come up with. First thing Billy Waugh said was, "Why the hell would anybody want anything with my name?" But that's where this, and then you throw Bill Harsey in the mix, who is an mm-hmm. absolute legend. Dude. He's the guy. Yeah. He's just a legend. But even this knife went hard use. Well, I I want to, uh, you know, talking about this gap and actually talking about that comment in particular, not everyone works in an industrial environment and not everyone wants to abuse their knives. First of all, uh, there's an assumption there that you're, I, and I never get this from you that you're one of these, you got to use your stuff, man, kind of guys. You're just out there using your stuff and we all get to watch. For me, a guy who's squeamish about doing the kind of stuff you do, it's nice to know that some of the knives I have that you have can stand up to the stuff you put it up to, you know? So to me, that's a valuable um, service in a way. Um, but also that gap of, uh, I think might also be, and 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 by the gap, I mean uh, between tabletop, uh, say, um, folding knife reviewers versus uh, out out in the woods chopping with choppers review knife reviewers. That gap is also a taste gap, though, um, right. where some people just. Um, I, someone that I love, that I know you love, uh, I offered to send him a fixed blade, and uh, you know, a nice uh, in 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 uh as a thank you for him sending me something and uh, he said he said very you know politely no thank you for me it's all about the mechanism the fidget and i was like oh that's interesting okay you know to me i'd be like battle axe sure send it uh you know whatever you got that's got a blade but that's not everybody no yeah no and that you know what that that's important to distinguish i do i started off say and use your stuff or you know the term but Mm -hmm. i did want to say since i'm with you i did want to explain that because i do try to explain that in the video here's my thing you have a randall Mm -hmm. which i'm very jealous of now rumor has it i've got one coming in next month or so i'm not going on record yet but here's the thing and here's here's when i say use your stuff here's what i'm talking about bob just like this knife right here prime example the Spartan Harsey folder. This Brandon Thrasher gave me this Thrasher's Garage. Man, I love this thing, right? But when you when you get a, a, a Spartan Harsey folder, it is a tactical folder. That's what it is. You know, we we overuse the word, but that's what it is. What I'm saying to people is this: if you buy this knife, because you'll hear this a lot. Well, if everything goes to hell. This is the knife I'm taking. Well, have you ever used it? Oh man, it's five hundred dollars. Well, if you buy a knife for that use, right now, if you buy a knife and you go, man, I I can appreciate everything about this knife. Yeah, I, I don't advocate taking um a two three thousand dollar knife and batoning. That's 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 not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, if you buy something for a purpose, build that skill set. Because, you know, you you have all kind of knives, just like I do. You have all kind of weapons, just like I do. And and one of the great joys that I take from doing this, and, and I've said this before, too, I'm the most, you'll find the most redundant human on the planet. But, man, using a different knife every day is a challenge. The last, the last three reviews I've done, I did a folder today. I did a Kukri. And I believe, oh, it, it hasn't come out yet, but the Work Tough Gear uh, Blackout. Three very distinct styles. When you do that consecutively, there, there's times that I've watched videos and went, you may want to redo that. Not, not because of the knife, but because of the, you know, I got in a run, say you get in a run of buoys, and man, you're just tearing, if you, 
do that, and then you stop and you turn and you go immediately, say, to a couple of kukris and then the folders, and then you come up with a Nesmic, you you know, you, I, and that's where my whole use your stuff came from. Mm -hmm. Don't have 12 knives you're going to take. Have a couple. Build that skill set. Keep it fresh. Use something else. That That's all I'm saying when I say is is if you buy something, be proficient with it. Yeah. I, I, so recently I've, I've been in a Bowie phase and I've gotten a bunch, some expensive, some, uh, some inexpensive and the inexpensive ones, uh, three in particular, the black mule Bowie by, uh, rough rider, the Ontario SP 10 and the, um, mm, what's the third one? Oh, the Schrade Leroy. And so these are knives. I, I bought the Schrade Leroy for my car. Uh, you know, carboy, you got to have one of those. And um, and then I got the other. So I've been having fun thrashing on them. And what I've noticed is kind of like when you train to fight um, uh, until you're actually making physical bodily contact with another person. It, it It's all theoretical. And it's the same thing with a chopper, for instance, slamming it into wood and hitting a knot. Well, when you're thinking about swinging that knife, you're not thinking about the knot. Uh, and you're not thinking about that jarring energy. So right. some, sometimes you just have to wake up your physical, your body, uh, just by that kind of activity. That's absolutely right. That, and it changes. And that, that, um, the SP 10 is their Marine Raider buoy. Yeah. I love mine. Love it. And it's a beast of a blade, yeah. but that's going to be a different skill set from this one, from the, from mm. the work from the blackout the handle's different the weight's different the whole nine yards but now that marine raider there's just something to be there's something to be said for it whether it's budget or not there's a lot to be said for that blade yeah it's a it's a really really excellent blade and it's also just it's got the bowie it's got the perfect look it's beautiful and to me that that plays a lot into knives that i love that i'm attracted to um, as I'm not, uh, for my lifestyle, a hard user, I'm not buying these knives because I think, you know, th this is the one I'm going to need for work. I'm buying them for other reasons. And one of them is aesthetics. I love the way they look and feel. And, um, how much of that, uh, the aesthetics, uh, plays into it for you? Uh, well, for me, it's, it's twofold, right? The channel, Choir Boys Cutler Outdoors. Aesthetic, spit, and finish are not a factor because on the channel, what I want to do is demonstrate the knife, learn how to use the knife, and 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 basically go ham. We talked a little bit about this blade before. This is the Nomad Camp. Yeah. Now this is the Bowler. I believe this is the. I'm sorry. This is the AT. Or this is the K340. I apologize. This is K340. My car to handle. I love the way this looks for the channel. It doesn't matter for me. Yeah. And, and I'm like you, man. I like the big knives. Obviously I like the aesthetic. I like it. This screams at me cause it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, I got one. Uh, I, I'll tell you the perfect aesthetic for me. Perfect shape for me. What I like personal. I just got this one in. Oh, wow. That is awesome. This is I'm, the Amish John, from, again, from Work Tough Gear. Now, that every, everything, Bob, right here that I love, I like a choil on a bigger blade because I use that fencing grip a lot. I love a recurve. I love a clip point and then the handle, the, the inner grip. And, and for those folks who watch my uh, videos a lot, I'm always going to give you this measure, right? Because that's important. So for me personally, for scab, yeah, this is me all day. I love the ergos, love the aesthetics. And I just think they're badass. Yes. To God. For the channel, we got to, you know, it's like, hey, we got a job to do. Yeah. And I'm going to bring some crazy stuff out on the channel because it's fun. And, and you know, how long have you done this, Bob? Uh, done what exactly? Making videos and stuff? Yeah, uh, the Knife Junkie podcast for four years now. How long have you done the reviews? 
The reviews uh, for, uh, I, I picked it back up four years ago. I started doing them in 2013, but man, I lost steam right quick. Did so uh, so early on, I only did about, say, 20 videos. And I came back to it when I started this podcast, when Jim and I started this. And I started doing review videos again. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, and you know how important it is to have fun. Yeah. There, there, there are, there are guys out there and I admire these guys who run, who run their channel like a brand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's organized and it's clean and it's neat. And I admire that. That is not me. I, I'm all over the place. If it's a riding with scab where we're hollering at people and talking about knives or a, a kitchen conversation with scab or, or whatever, or we're in the swamp or we're in the woods, or we're in the front yard. Um, but I learn from everybody. And the one thing that I've learned from everybody is this, there has to be a measure of fun an element of fun. In it, yep. I think to persevere and when it's not fun anymore, I'm out, but I, but, but right now it's a blast, you know? Well, in a way it seems like, uh, channels that, well, like yours, uh, it's more like their journals in a way or v vlogs or blogs, you know what I mean? more than um, some of the other more regimented channels uh, that you were mentioning. And actually, um, I I personally, and I, I I would bet most of us have use for all of them. I like I like the um, the warm blanket feel of watching someone's videos and I know exactly what they're gonna do and how they're gonna, and I know their opinion before they even tell right. me because I've seen so many of their videos. I love that because it's the personality you're tuning into um you know I, i'm thinking of all these names right now but yeah. then but then there are uh you know then there's also the videos uh, or the channels like yours that are more uh catching up with scab where are you i'm in the car and i'm showing you my knife uh or or i'm out here in the swamp and i'm showing you a battle axe you know it could be anything and yeah. and that's that is exciting just like there's that uh the security of that warm blanket it's also cool to go out and just explore yeah and it, but that's what i was talking about too just to me every review has value on a lot of no matter how you run your channel no matter how and there's a little bit of everybody in their channel when i look at it when i look at a channel or when i watch a channel or when i watch a new channel one thing that i that i love is trying to figure out the psychology of that channel, right? Like, I love the knives. I love knives, axes, spears, swords, machetes, tomahawks, daggers, you name folders. But I also like to know their thought process behind the channel. Why are you doing it? What's your approach? Because part of the fun for me, Bob, is building the channel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there are a lot of guys and I talk to a lot of guys and, and, and they're honest. They're like, dude, look, I'm just here to show my collection, have a good time, hang out in the chats. And I think that's cool. Yeah, I really do. I really do. And then there's the guys who are like, Hey man, I'm on a mission. This is what we're doing. Here's what we're going. This is, this is the end result. And I like seeing that because again, at the end of the day and you take uh, uh, the tragedy with Jason Brown, Everybody go. Everything stops, and everybody comes here, and that's what it's about, and that's what it should be about. And so, I love that. But I love figuring out why people do what they do. You know, why do you show a knife that way? What's important? Just like you said, what's important to you about the knife? You know, what what are some things you look for Bob, in a knife? Like if you're if you're going to buy a knife, if you're going to purchase a knife, what's what what's the first thing? Uh, oh, first thing. Oh man. Um, well, I get, I, I get on Jags, I get in little fits, you know, uh, where like I've been in this Bowie fix and uh, fit and I've been in one many times. That's why I have a lot of Bowie knives, but recently I've been taking, taking it more seriously. And, and I like, until I get a Natchez Bowie, like it, it probably won't stop. That's kind of my, I love fighting Bowies. I, you know what, Scab, like I approach this all from a weapon uh, point of view. Like the fact that, that I now like EDC knives, like this QSP Penguin, which is an awesome knife, 
has been an evolution uh, while doing uh, the podcast and and meeting other people who have shown me how great these things are. But really, I come at it from a weapons perspective, and that's just always been my my thing. So what I look for is something that no matter what, no matter how small or insignificant, can be used as a weapon if possible. That's always kind of my first jumping off point. I like it. I have well, I have a little collection of ice picks. Oh. So I'm in this. I, I look at things in it in it. You know, I, when I started, when I started, honestly, a lot of mine was necessity, right? Um, when I really started collecting hard, I was doing underground utility location. So we're in the woods, we're in the swamp. A lot of times we would go help survey crews cut lines into which was a blast because it gave me a chance to take all my new machetes out there and just cut. Oh yeah. You know, and nobody's going to say, you know, why are you doing well? We're cutting line. Um, but, but as I've done the channel, it, it's funny you should mention that as I've done the channel and the skill set has grown and I, and, and we all can cut zip ties. We can all cut cardboard. We can all, but, when you get down to like making a tri, tri stick or you get down to the nuance of, of shaving a piece of wood to start a fire, as as that skill set has grown, I've noticed I've started leaning more and more to the, you know, to the medium size knives. And I love every blade. You, you, there's not a knife you can show me that I would go, eh. This this little one here. This I think. This oh yes, is five bucks. The BPS. Yep. Are you kidding me? This for for what you get there, made in Ukraine. You, I mean, you you know about these. Yeah, I have that very one. That's an awesome knife, the HK five. Yeah. It. I just used it in earnest for the first time this past weekend, and, and I was using it for. I basically I took whittled down a big log into a baton, you know, and I used that to carve out the handle. And I could not believe how sharp it was. That thing is awesome. And they're, so, they they come like this. All I've got the um. Well, I had it. I dropped it. But I was telling you before we started, I big time into the um, pocket fix blade, right? Yes. And I love those. As a matter of fact, I wanted to show you a couple. So this is this is what I was going to ask you about because um, uh, I know you carry a fixed blade knife every day, yeah. um, uh, and I was curious how that has changed. I know now you're into medium fixed blade knives, and I know you carry them daily because, as you mentioned, the the environments that you work in are just not uh, appropriate. Uh, a folder is not appropriate. Um, so how how do you carry your fixed blade knives on the work site? But then how do you carry them? Once you leave the work site, like how does your whole fixed blade system work? Honest to God, I have there. The, there's well, where'd I put them? I have. I'll show you a couple different kinds. This is the Silent Hero Four from Tops, hmm. and I'm just I'm gonna show you these just to give you a, an idea. Here's my RMJ U cap. Here's an Alpha AK Five. This is this thing's dope. That's cool. When I'm on the job site, they go in my pocket. I, I literally, that's why I call them pocket fixed blades. This is the one I was showing you that I carry every day of my life, the Nomad EDC. And and I'll show you my, my, this is exactly the way I carry it. It's just a little pancake canvas. It slides right in my pocket. I use it just like a folder. On the weekends, I've got a leather sheath that's got an ulti clip. I still stick it in my pocket with the ulti clip, and that's how I carry it. Or, nice. or Scout, or it's always low key, or the Laguna, which is just a fantastic, again, my work tough gear stuff. Um, I, I just put them in my, and I know that sounds so stupid, but I just put them in my pocket. Well, that's not stupid. I, I mean, you got to, if you have to carry a fixed blade every day, and I prefer to, you got to have some sort of system worked out. Otherwise, it's kind of like a gun. It you're not going to carry it because it's always kind of uh, you know, and it's too big. Like I I have I have I have a quite a collection of knives that that fit in the waistband just nicely, just how I like them. And um, 
I, I, and the funny thing is, is I only actually carry about three of them. Usually I, I rotate through three that I just love, but, um, fixed blade and a folder. Do you, what, what do you find the ultimate value of having a fixed blade on you is? Well, for me, a fixed blade, it's hard to, well, I'll tell you just like this with, with, with the one that I carry every day. Zeke Minacho design is work tough gear made it. And, and I've got a couple of videos on it, but the, the benefit Bob is it's not breaking. There's no mechanism to screw up. There's, there's, you know, you don't have to worry about action. You don't have to worry. It's there. It's in your hand. It's ready to go anytime I need, it. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, that's the benefit. It, it, and, and, and sandblasting and powder coating, I'll recognize, and I don't want to. The other side is if you're holding something up and you got to cut it, I do stick it in my pocket. I have a way or I'll tuck it in my belt where I can just pop it and it's there, cut what I need. And if I have to, I'll put it down, you know, but again, I'm not worried about it breaking. It has the thickness, the sturdiness. It's made for everything. That, that for me is the benefit. You know, I don't have to worry about the lockup, the lock fail, any of that. It just, it's there and it works. Or and grit like in the action, things. which would just drive me absolutely up a wall. Uh, so, okay. So for most people, uh, I, I know that the work tough gear uh, knives are um, released in very limited batches and that little nomad I'm sure is not available. Um, if it, it is, it's, same. it's not now. Oh, okay. We'll be okay. Uh, but so in your opinion, what is a great uh, fixed blade knife to recommend to a folder collector, a folder user, a folder guy? Uh, many, 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 many of us are. Um, exclusively folder guys, but I, I feel like guys and gals, of course, because there are a lot of women out there who collect knives too. Uh, so what what would be the best fixed blade knife? Because everyone's got to have at least one non-kitchen fixed blade knife, you know, just because. What would now, it be? About pocket fixed blade, medium size fixed blade, what? Just, just one fixed blade. You, I, I have to say that Nomad EDC. Yeah, um, but they they can't get oh oh they will be able to. All right, let's keep it under a hundred bucks. So you're talking about something you could, that's going to be there every day, all day. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, uh, there's a uh, you know folder collector, and you're like you got to have a, a fixed blade. I'd say the Silent Hero Four. Ooh, Silent Hero Four. I mean, because they're going to be there, but but for a fixed blade, and for for a lot of folder guys, a lot of guys carry folders. A million different reasons, and I promise you in the comments I'll get there. No, Jeb, don't. But this to me would be conducive. See, I'm a, I'm a, I, Bob, I'm a big folder guy. I just yeah. like Billy Wah. Now let's put it up against the Silent Hero Four, right? It's bigger than the Silent Hero Four. So, and I believe this is a four-inch blade. So for me, easy access, and I, I'm not sure the cost on this. But I don't think it's out. I don't think it's crazy. Yeah. But the other, I think that's their 154 CM tops does so nicely on their knives that are. I believe uh, you're right. It, yeah. Off. I believe you're right. But the, the thing, too, for me is that handle because I've got busted up hand. So for me, if you're a folder guy, I'd say start off with a Silent Hero 4. Just something that you, like you said. Now, if you can get them, I, the Nomad EDC is it, but if you can't, I'd say a tops. I, I, that's just, but you know, again, that man, there's a million different, but I'm talking about, yeah. if we're talking about if you're a folder guy, you still want something small, you're not sure, because you can carry this scout carry, or you can just stick the darn thing in your pocket. Yeah. And, and start to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? Get used to carrying a fixed plate. And I would advocate that. I really would not because I think they're better than folders, but, but again, it goes back to that skill set and get you a knife that you're going to use. Don't go out and buy a, a $400 knife or nothing against that. I got them, but I use them that you're not going to use. Break it in, you know, go in that, go in that a hundred to $200 range. Use the knife. And then as you go, 
hone it in, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sure. It, it, and I feel like um, I, I, with the uh, with the fixed blades, uh, if you're going to carry a knife at all for self-defense and you're going out thinking that that's what you're doing, uh, and I do that, definitely, I consider every knife on me a self-defense knife, but if you're carrying a knife for self-defense, man, manage a fixed blade because you don't want to have to manage opening a folding knife in, in a situation where you're actually going to use a knife uh, to defend yourself. That would just be, to me, that just seems intuitive. I don't know. I don't have the experience. Thank the Lord. And uh, hopefully never do. Um, but it just seems to me like dealing with that mechanism, you know, that's why I love Emerson's, you know, that's why I love the wave. That's why I love cold steels. I mentioned up front. Oh God, there's that sax. I love that sax. I'm sorry for that interruption, but uh, Jim is scrolling through your Instagram page. And I just saw that, uh, beautiful sax. But as I mentioned up front, you're a cold steel guy. You're an Emerson guy. Um, and, and I think I know why, but, but let's talk cold steel for a minute. Uh, how do you feel about cold steel and how did you feel about the sale? Do you have any, uh, opinions about the, the sale to GSM and all of that? Well, I, I bought, I love cold steel. Oh yeah. I mean, here, here. that, I got this one. I just love cold steel. The, as far as the sale goes, you know, I, there's a lot of people that get upset. Oh, they sold out. Well, you know, here's the deal. The Lynn was in it from when 1980. Mm -hmm. The man put in 40 years of his heart and soul. And I, I just feel like if he wants to sell it, I, see, I'm a big believer in that. If 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 that's like some of the stuff, you know, the the riffs or American made or this and that. At the end of the day, I hope GSM can maintain their legacy and do right by land. That's big with me. I hope they can because cold cold listen, cold steel built who they were, whether you like them or not, on big badass fun knives. And if you don't believe it. Go to YouTube and type in Cold Steel Fishing with a Katana and watch Buck Medley, the South Texas legend with a Cold Steel Katana machete, stab a fish. You know, I, I, I will go one one further about Cold Steel. I, I love them always. You know, they've they've been they've. 1988 or 87 is when I got my first cold steel and I spent 115 bucks on it. I got it in the mall and it was the master Tonto still by my bed to this day. Um, I love cold steel and I have a huge collection. Um, and I, I would say there, in addition to everything you've mentioned, an, a huge part of their value is the historical aspect of it because everything like the Navaja, you were just holding up the uh, Espada XL. That's a Navaja, you know, and the, Spaniards could no longer carry their swords. They started carrying giant folding knives to, to settle their scores. And the fact that uh, Lynn Thompson has a huge collection of historical knives and kind of goes into the into the archive and picks one out and has his comp or had his company produce it. To me, that is the coolest thing yeah. ever. Yeah. He listen, and I know and, and there's both sides. People don't like him and all this. The guy was one of the best guys for this knife community there's ever been. And there's no disagreeing with that. Whether you like him or you don't, he he put out his product. He stood, you know, he was unabashed about it. He carried, I think, two of these, mm -hmm. if not more. I mean, he would pull out knives from everywhere. But to me, he made knives fun. I mean, it's just a massive, I've got a, I've got a uh, short, Bob, one of the, now, it's it's got, I think, 6.5, almost 7 million views, but it was of this night. And oh, it's wow. just of pulling the dang thing out. <laughs> it evokes so much emotion. I've been called fat in every language across the globe on seven continents. <laughs> and that's fine, because it's 7 million views. I mean, but, <laughs> but, it's, but it's, dude, anytime you do a cold still anything, it's views. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it evokes emotion, and I love, I love, I, I watch to this day. I'll go back and watch some of their, you know, 
where they cut a boot full of meat or a oh pig. yeah the, <laughs> the proof videos my it's brother and i used to get them every winter because that when the catalog came out and uh you know christmas break we we lay down on the floor in the tv room and watch i remember my dad coming in once and like what is this he saw you know pig getting chopped in half Little did he know he'd be watching that for fun years later on Forged in Fire. But uh. exactly, exactly. But they, I mean, I you know, as far as the sale, I hope they are able to maintain and continue. You know, I and I've got probably seventy pieces of cold steel, maybe more. I know at one point I had more, and in all of that, I think I only had one knife that that. I was really disappointed in. And I think that was the heat treat. But if you think about that one yeah. in 80 and it's still key. You. I mean, if you want to look at it from that stage, it's still yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. Or you'll, you'll still be able to survive with it in the woods yeah. at the end of the day. And, and you brought up a valid point when it comes to a fixed blade and, and self-defense and people have kind of messed with me, you know, cause I kind of, I shy away from the topic. There's a reason for that. But if you want to if you want to discuss folder versus fixed blade, ask Jim Bowie. Because his folder didn't work the first time when the old boy shot him several times. That's why his brother gave him the knife. Oh, it was a folder he was going for? Or what? the first the first time he had one of those big ass folders and he couldn't get it out. This precipitated the sandbar fight. Okay. That's the first time he got shot. That's why his brother gave him the knife. And then from what I understand, and there's a hundred different variations, but Bowie took it to the guy. The guy made some alterations and the rest is history. But at the first, the very first action, he had a folder that failed on or he failed to open it. That's what started that. Um, so ask him and anybody that's ever been in a fight. Or been sucker punch. That, that's that's the thing, uh, Bob. When you carry a knife, again, it falls back to. Uh, and I seen a guy the other day said, "Well, I bought this for self defense." And I'm thinking, you'll get killed. The knife's got to be able to deploy. I love the Emerson, but anybody that's ever been sucker punched, and I worked in bars for 20 years, man. When you first get tapped. And you see that wall of white, you're not, you're not, unless you're trained, right? Unless it's instinct, when you're looking at that wall of white, you're not going for your knife. You're thinking, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I am an advocate. If you're going to, again, if you're going to have a knife for self defense, make sure you understand how to use it. Make sure you know how to deploy it. If not, it can be the, it, it, seriously, it can be a matter, and you know this, of life and death. And I think that's where if I, I agree with you on the fixed play. No mechanism, no, just, you're there. And once that, you're there, you better use it. The years uh, of martial arts training with friends, learning knife techniques, learning Filipino martial arts and, and MDS with a knife and, and this stuff has has taught me that I really like doing it and practicing it with my friends right. in a controlled environment. It's also taught me that it's the last thing in the world I want to ever happen. And I, I also understand why people have a more visceral reaction to this, uh, to that kind of thing. You know, uh, a, a, a firearm used in self-defense uh, garners a different reaction than a knife. And it's because of how horrifying it, the reality of it is. And, you know, all you have to do, and I'm sure we've all done it, is just type into the search engine, you know, knife fight, and you'll see some horrible pictures. And it is true. It's the guy who dies second who wins, you know. <laughs> so that's that, that that is all um, that is my way of explaining that really, for me, this is a hobby. It's a love. It's a re you know, I don't want to say research. That sounds but I, I like reading about the stuff and finding out about the history, um, you know, um, and it just so happens that it's on the, the weapony side of things, you know, but uh, I like to tell people I'm no, you know, I'm not John Wick, obviously. Right. I mean, I don't think anyone would mistake me for that, for a tough guy, but, but I'm not trying to portray that, you know. 
Oh, no. That's, and you learning and understanding Kirk, who I have on my channel um, frequently, he's the one that got me in and I, he took a lot of the Filipino martial arts and he understands it. I have a friend of mine who was in um, uh, with the teens mm. for a decade or better. And, and he showed me a few things. As a matter of fact, this past uh, Friday, I was just sitting with him and we were talking about and it, and it ran through my mind. That'd be a shitty way to go. Excuse my language, but that'd be a bad way. And but, but it's like when you really, when you really start thinking about it. And that's why I said a lot of times, if you're, if you are going to pull a knife and you're going to use it, you need to understand it's, it's, you know, you stab somebody, that muscle tenses up. It's, it's, it's a weird feeling. You know, it's not glamour. It's not. So make sure when you do that, it's a legit situation. I've said this on my channel many times. You go into a bar and running your mouth and getting your ass handed to you is not. And then pulling a knife. That's not self-defense. Right. The law is not going to be on your side. And I've seen guys, you go. I've seen guys do that. I've seen guys walk in, especially in the South. Everybody's got a pocket knife. Just do this the whole night. If some old boy just wears them out, and they want to pull or not. It's like, no, uh -uh. that's not. That's just you can't fight, and you got what you got. You know, so like with with you doing the training, you understand. You've done the training, so you understand everything that goes with it. You understand that there's a repercussion and a consequence. That's part of the training, right? A lot of these guys just get knives. Well, I'm gonna, you, you know, and they'll get a knife this big, and it's like, dude, what? You gonna sword fight them? What are you? I mean, you know, or they'll get a knife this big, and it's like, dude, you'll never get that out of your pocket. You know? Yeah. So I, I think you have a very valid point, and I, very valid. I say learn how to box. That's what you should do. And if you got to get in a fight, just box it out, buy each other a beer, and and be done with it. Um, so I want to I want to I want to double back to your we talked a little bit about the shorts. You mentioned how the shorts have been your um, used uh, a lot of comments or controversy uh, happening in your shorts. What is what is that about? I love your shorts and I, and I see a lot of them pop up. Well, and, uh, what's controversial about them? Well, it, it's it, I did one where I was talking about I think I said uh Twinkle Toes McFinger Bank. I, I wasn't saying it against anybody. I know what I said. I said, if you want to see this knife work, watch this channel. If you if you want to hear about it, watch Twinkle Toes McFinger. Just playing around. Mm -hmm. Not thinking anybody in particular. And I guess when I made that short, it was a terrible time because there was already something that had been said. Now, guys like Mattisfaction and Lefty and those guys, they died laughing. And me and Lefty had a back and forth. And and it was a lot of fun. But there were some people in the community that really just got bent over it. I'm like, wait a minute. It, but it goes back to me not, I was never a part of the community beforehand. So some of this stuff, mm -hmm. I'm learning on the fly. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this, man, is all new to me. So... That's kind of what I was saying. And a lot of my shorts, when I do shorts, because that's kind of what the recent growth is really from that, because here's the truth, and you know this. We bust our butts to put out video. We work hard to put out the videos and, and put time into the videos and, and all that. YouTube does nothing to push them. Nothing. So it's either word of mouth or you got to guess the algorithm, which good luck with that. But then they come along with shorts. And I've just, it, honestly, I found a way to reach a broader audience. So that's what I've done. And, and I found that the shorter the short um, or the cutting, you, you, you'll never, there's a ton of people. And, and let me say this. I did want to get into this a little bit. I don't know what kind of time we have, but I want to get into it some. We're blessed in this country. You you mess with knives your whole life. So have I. 
right? It's just part of life. Hmm. So if you say, Scab, what pocket knife are you carrying today? And I show you, well, we're going to have a conversation. One of the things that I found with doing the shorts, and and, and everybody's different. You got to figure out your time frame. Like mine is, um, my best time for shorts is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. for whatever reason, <laughs> right? But they go global. And Bob, I get all kinds all kind of comments legit is that to hurt somebody hmm. you know or say no to knife violence and i'm and at first i was like oh, over I see. but then i'm like as as i kind of delve into it and I've, I've got to where i just don't respond because my humor doesn't translate and i don't want to offend anybody but what i've learned is and and this sounds so basic so elementary but it's true what this channel's really helped me see, the shorts helped me see, is knives are viewed, they're not viewed the same around the world as we view. We view them as tools, as pocket knives. We carry them daily. We use them for everything. When in other parts of the world, it is nothing but a weapon, or it's viewed as nothing but a weapon. So I'm like, and I found myself answering, no, this is, and I, a legit answer, no, this is what I use it for on my daily. And, and people have said, really, we can't do that here. And it's been interesting, you know, because America has, the United States has, we, we have basic freedoms across the board. There are some arcane and archaic knife laws. Thank God for knife rights. Seriously, thank God for Doug Ritter. But we can still carry a knife. And there's other countries, man, you can't walk out of the house without it. So are you, were you hearing these kind of comments mostly from Western Europe? Because I think South America is blade friendly, the um south pacific is blade for it was it mostly western europe england a lot, and a lot of european i've got i got a lot um I, I guess from i'm i don't want i don't want to say anything wrong um like more asian countries okay there was a lot of a lot of comments there middle eastern it wasn't that big a deal they seemed to be more blade friendly a yeah. lot from from Europe. There was, as a matter of fact, there's a lot in there. And believe me, there's a lot more um, eco friendly people in Europe. You know, when you go in the woods and you're cutting and chopping, there's a lot of people that my dear <laughs> hugging friends from over there. I, I get these guys. But but I was kind of astonished, you know, and, and, and like you said, there's there's certain places who definitely understand knives, definitely. But some of the places it was just like wow and then some of it i don't know if it's an age thing but i had one guy just he's like so they're not meant to hurt him i was like look dude, no it's to cut an apple it's to cut zip ties i and i use i honestly legitimately use a knife every day for work legit use one every day if we're we're cutting hoses zip ties whatever you know uh, uh, splicing doing all that so for me, I never think about it, but it's been a joy learning, you know, it yeah. just, things a journey and none of this is meant to be negative. It's just, it's learning and, and growing and moving forward. Well, if nothing, if nothing else, those comments are, are a, just uh, put in sharp relief, how lucky we are to live where we live, you know, um, uh, not only because of our hobby, but just in general, um, let, uh, I, I want to ask you before we, we do a speed round here um, okay. with people who have YouTube channels and review. Uh, but before we do that, I, I want to ask you, where do you want to see uh, choir boys cutlery outdoors? Um, where do you want to see, how do you want to see it grow? I've set a goal. I, I believe in setting goals. What I want to do, I want to see us. Uh, I want to see us hit 30,000 by January 1st. I want to see us hit 75,000 by June 23rd. That's the anniversary of my channel. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see by the end of maybe next year, this time, 100,000. And the reason I'd like to do that is, is, is one, the challenge, just being honest, the, the mm -hmm. ego part of it. But I do know this, we do a raffle every year. And what we do, Bob, is is I'll buy knives, channels will donate knives, and we raise money for veterans. Now, nothing comes to us, nothing. You donate to 
we we make sure we give you kind of a list of reputable charity charities, none of which we are involved with. You donate to them, you screenshot the receipt, send us to us. Usually for every five bucks, you get a raffle ticket. But what I'd like to do with the channel is grow it to where I can do more. And these causes that I have really put rubber to the road and really be able to help some folks. That's where I'd like to be. The numbers are great and the challenge is fun and the journey's the big part. But there, there is a big part of me that at, at a point wants to be able to affect some serious change. Where if Bob said, Scav, I need your help. We want to raise X amount. I want to have a channel that can help you do that. If that makes sense. Yes, I, it does. It, it, it just makes me think of um, my father and my grandfather. And I just kind of remember um, or, or just sort of am aware that uh, a lot of the adults in my life reach about my age. You know, I'm in my 50s now and and uh, they reach about that age and they're like, OK, I think it's time for me to start giving back. You know, I've been taking a lot. I've been, you know, uh, I don't want to say selfish, but working on my family, working on my career and this and that. And now, see, for me, it's not quite time for that. I still <laughs> I still have. No, but this idea of giving back, I think, is, um, you know, everyone kind of experiences that at some time. And and it seems like the knife world has given you a lot. You know, it's given me a lot. And just the I, you know, I was just thinking the other day, what if I what if Jim had never convinced me to start the Knife Junkie podcast and I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had all these experiences and all these conversations that would have been, a, uh, you know, it's, it's been invaluable. Yeah. You, you, I, I tell you, I, I happen, my wife happened to look up the other day, top 10 knife podcast. And you were listed in the top 10. Knife. Oh, cool. Thank you. And she was reading them off and I said, Hey, I'm going to be on that one. She said, <laughs> yeah. I said, no, seriously, I, I'm, we're in talks. So, you're already, and, and to me, that's cool because when you look that up, they see Bob, they see the knife junkie, they see, so you are affecting change and you are giving people a platform. That's cool, man. And, and the thing is this, and I say this honestly and I say it earnestly, I'm to a point already, I've only done this uh, right at Christmas will be two and a half, two and a half years. So we've grown pretty rapidly in two and a half years. But I'm at a point now where, because, you know, you hear it, I hear, oh, y'all just do it for free knives. I don't need any more free knives. Matter of fact, I just told uh, a maker the other day, he said, man, how does this work? Do, you know, if I want to get you to review a knife, do I give it to you? I'm like, no, dude, just send me the knife. I'm going to review it. I said, but now make sure you watch my reviews because mm -hmm. that doesn't change. We're going to do what we do, but I'll send it back. And he said, are you serious? And I'm like, bro, if I have one more knife that I get to keep, my wife's going to kill me. So if I'm, you know, I'm kind of at a point and that man, what a spot to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't me? Yeah. To, to, to it's good trouble. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, man. I mean, now the, if I have a knife that I keep, it's one I make sure I'm yeah. and that's made me, and, and you might be in this spot now too, where it's like, I used to, if it was a blade and I wanted, I bought it. Now I kind of just like, let's let's narrow this down. You know, let's let's get just what we want. Yep. And like, we what we think we're not going to lose interest in quickly. Quickly. Right. And I am I am starting to find that the fixed blades will always be there, and and certain certain folders, but I'm not going for the flavor of the month folder anymore. Right. Right. All right. Let me let's let's do the speed round because there are some burning questions we have to get to here. Um, there are about 16 of them. And uh, I think I know the answers to some of them, but I don't want to be presumptuous. So let's do this. All right. Scab fixed or folder fixed flipper or thumb stud flipper washers or bearings bearings. Uh, tip up or tip down? Tip up. Tonto or Bowie? Bowie. Hollow ground or flat ground? Flat. Full guard or half guard? Half. Full tang or stick tang? Full. Contoured handle or neutral like a coffin handle? Contoured. 
Condor or Ontario Knife Company? Ontario. Cold Steel or Work Tough? Work Tough. Single Edge or Double Edge? <sighs> mm. Single Edge. That with, a, with, with an asterisk. <laughs> that one's closer than you think. Yeah, uh, yeah, I get it. V ground or apple seed edge? V. Finger choil or no choil? Finger choil. Finger choil. Form or function? Function. Okay, now your desert island knife. And it doesn't have to be on a desert island, but you only get to keep one knife for the rest of your life. What is it? Nomad EDC. Okay, I have to ask, will this change in five weeks? No. Okay, that is a beauty. And I'm glad you had your knife right there to show off. That's that's a perfect way to round it out. Scab, thank you so much for coming on. Please tell uh, uh, viewers and listeners how they can catch up with all of your content. I, well, I'm on YouTube, Choir Boys Cutler Outdoors. Choir Boys with a Z. Basically, you can catch me across the board with that. Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors. I'm on YouTube, Instagram. Facebook is Scott Baldwin. Um, I do ask if you follow me on Facebook or send me a friend request, just post on one of my videos. Hey, Scab, I sent you a friend request. Um, and TikTok, which, believe it or not, I have a pretty big TikTok presence, but that's nothing to do with knives. That's more story time with Scab. But that's how oh, you yeah. That's that that sounds worth getting TikTok for. <laughs> that, that one, well, you know what, man? They they I started off on TikTok just to have another little venue. And man, Bob, every time I put a knife video up, and it might just be me, it gets struck. And I got mad one day and I said, screw it, and told a story about a, a episode at a convenience store. And then it took off. So TikTok is literally story time with scab they're all three minutes and and it's a lot of fun but <laughs> wire boys cutler outdoors man thank you for having me oh it's i my... really really appreciate this uh the pleasure is mine sir it's been great to actually meet you in person well virtually in person uh, i look forward to shaking your hand maybe at blade show in atlanta and uh until then sir thank you for coming on the show appreciate you good night good night do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Scab of Choir Boys Cutlery, now at the stage where he's giving back. And what a, what a great way to do it through this medium and with this community. Um, and beyond. Uh, speaking of which, uh, join us next week for another great interview, as well as Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental and Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.